a big part of the mystery of selfhood has to do with the fact that all the pieces and parts that make up you are constantly turning over. Your body is built out of 30 trillion cells, and this is just cellular stuff. Every bit of the cells has a lifetime. Most of the cells die or subdivide at some point, but even those cells that stick around your whole life and don't divide, like your neurons, they're totally different every few years. Why? Because brain cells aren't made out of something stable like metal or cement. Instead, they're made out of the basic proteins and lipids and other molecules that make up any cell in the body. And those things aren't particularly stable. So every single neuron and every cell in your body is like the ship of Theseus. Every part of it is getting rebuilt all the time, one plank at a time, or in this case, one molecule at a time. The pieces and parts of the cell have no meaningful stability. And so a big part of all that cellular machinery is simply building and rebuilding and rebuilding. And in this way, everything gets replaced. So who you are physically changes all the time. And the question is, how does your self stay intact over this changing substrate? The answer is, it's not clear that it does. But cognitively, you have this illusion of stability. You are one being. You've spent your whole life with a fixed history, as in, I grew up here. Here's my name. This was my hometown. These were my parents. This is how my trajectory in life has unfolded, leading me from here to there to there. And so we tend to hold the impression that our identities are something very stable. But in fact, who you are drifts. In this light, it's always struck me as funny to think about the notion of an afterlife because what age would you be? Depending on when you get there, you might be a very different person than you were even five years before that. And so all this inspired me to write a short story that's published in my book, Sum, S-U-M. And I'm going to read that story to illustrate the questions of this episode. The story is called Prism. God resolved at the outset that he wanted every human to participate in the afterlife. But the plans weren't thought out to completion. And immediately, he began to run up against some confusion about age. How old should each person be in the afterlife? Should this grandmother exist here at her age of death? Or should she be allowed to live as a young woman, recognizable to her first lover, but not to her granddaughter? He decided it was unfair to keep people the age they were at the end of their lives, when much of their beauty and alacrity had been worn down. Allowing everyone to live as a young adult proved an unviable solution because the afterlife quickly degenerated into unbounded sexual pursuits. And at middle ages, they talked only about their children and mortgages, making conversations in the afterlife tedious. God finally landed on an ingenious solution while watching light diffract through a prism. So when you arrive here, you are split into your multiple selves at all possible ages. The you that existed as a single identity is now all ages at once. These pieces of you no longer get old, but remain ageless into perpetuity. The yous have transcended time. This takes some getting used to. The different beams of you might run into each other at the grocery store, like separate people do in Earth life. Your 76-year-old self may revisit his favorite creek and run into your 11-year-old self. Your 28-year-old self may break up with a lover in a diner and notice your 35-year-old self visiting that spot, lingering on the air of regret hanging over the empty seat. Typically, the different yous are happy to see each other because they possess the same name and a shared history. But the yous are more critical of yourselves than they are of others. And so each you quickly identifies habits that get under your skin. It's a fact of the afterlife. Don't be surprised to discover that after decomposition into your different ages, the different yous tend to drift apart. You discover that the you of eight years old has less in common than expected with the you of 32 and the you of 64. 
the 18-year-old you finds more in common with other 18-year-olds than with your 73-year-old you. The 73-year-old you doesn't mind a bit seeking out meaningful conversations with others of the same generation. Beyond the name, the yous have little else in common. But don't lose hope. The shared resume of life, parents, birthplace, hometown, school years, first kiss, has a magnetic, nostalgic pull. So once in a while, the different yous organize a gathering, like a family reunion, bringing together all your ages into a single room. At these reunions, the middle-aged will delightedly pinch the cheeks of the young, and the teenagers will politely listen to the stories and advice of the elderly. These reunions reveal a group of individuals touchingly searching for a common theme. They appeal to your name as a unifying structure, but they come to realize that the name that existed on Earth, the you that moved serially through these different identities, was like a bundle of sticks from different trees. They come to understand with awe the complexity of the compound identity that existed on the earth. They conclude with a shudder that the earthly you is utterly lost, unpreserved in the afterlife. You were all these ages, they concede, and you were none. So we're changing all the time, but why is it hard to keep track of these changes? Obviously, it's because everything in our lives and our biology changes so slowly. It's like the hour hand of a clock. You can see that it's moved, but you can't see it move. In general, we can see change most readily in the growth of our children. You look back at photographs from a year ago on your phone, and you can't believe how much things have changed. But it's hard to keep track of the changes in yourself. A friend of my parents went to his high school reunion, which was taking place at a hotel, and he went around looking at the different conference rooms to figure out which one was the correct class because they were divided up by decades. And he thought he found the right room, but he popped his head in and he realized that's completely not the right room. All of those are very old people. And then he stepped back and looked at the sign and realized that indeed this was the correct room. And he too must presumably look that old to others, even if he still thought of himself as young on the inside. So it's hard to keep track of our own changes because they happen slowly. But maybe the thing that binds your self together across the ever-changing physical substrate is the one thing you have that remains constant, your memory. <laughs> 